and with the accidents I had, the next step back, I thought I could never go and paint a tomb. Oh, I went <laughs> by myself to Delta, oh. and mom dad had a double tomb. Uh -huh. I had to scrape all that in the pot, and I painted it completely. I praise God for that. Oh. <laughs>
resurrection motivated us to continue in the faith.
I'll be right hand for one second. You have the final say in my life. Let's be rapping to me. I want to know what Jesus I must. Man. I must. Because if I can believe it, I can trust it. I have faith in the word. I accept the word. I expect to put my trust in him. Not in them or man. My trust is in the Lord. It's in Jesus. This morning. Oh, I love you this morning. Only God. And I'm telling you.
your salvation. Not about your denomination. Where your soul is in.
Amen. Speak what thus saith the Lord. I got scripture this morning. Speak what thus saith the Lord of hope. There's a way that seems right to me. All the words, whatever, are just. But the end thereof is set up.
for long day. Come on now, brother. Listen up. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, sir. But I want to bring something to your attention. And I want you to realize what I'm saying. Here is your dad. Uh -huh. Physically. Go to church at the church you talk to about in Christ. Listen to your papa. Come on, come on. Go and give God some praise and some glory and some thanks and some honor. And get to yourself with your sons and light up back in the world. Come on now. In your world. Shalom.
you that I did it wrong. The proof's in the pudding. Let that be my lesson. I am a liar. I'm going to read my scripture. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm reading from Romans, the book of Romans, the seventh chapter. And I want to begin reading at verse 2. My, 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 my. I must find you. He 
because he didn't just draw none of us here by accident. He drew us here for a purpose. It Not sure his purpose it will get accomplished. It's your destiny. But what my purpose and your purpose get accomplished. It's up to me and it's up to you. It changes. Oh, God. I don't know what it's going to take or what it's going to do. Oh, wake me up. Put it aside. I'm putting it aside. Put it aside. Let's go. And see in your face, God, what it is. Because there's coming a time. There's coming a time. There's a day. There's a day with this. Telling you, and I'm telling myself, I'm talking to me. Oh, and I'm oh, I'm oh, 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 oh. I don't get myself in my life. Oh, how do I expect to help someone grow if I need help myself? How can I expect to tell people that God delivered you from alcohol, sin? How can I leave anyone? If I'm bound to these things myself, where's the deliverance? <laughs> it's more effective. Ripple. Yeah. That's the truth of the ego. I'm telling you, this, the wages of sin is death. It's always going to be death. But the other side, the gift of God, is eternal. There's eternal life. You need to be submerged completely out of the water. Now suffering can go under. You have to go under. Yes. Yes. And the word of Jesus Christ has got to be spoken over you. Your soul. It's your call. 
It's your I call. I was to do it this morning. I said, Lord, he must have been keeping in my notes. <laughs> you must have I ESP. haven't seen him since last Tuesday. <laughs> you must have ESP. Praise God. God knows better than any of us. He really does. And the fact is, He knows you and I better than we know ourselves. He knows if we make it or not. Amen. I told somebody, I said, you put 12 dead holes on your doors and have the windows on the inside of you. I said, God still sees everything at all. When you're diving down the road and you're waving at your Christian friends and there's something else on your mind, God knows. He picked up on it. Christian men said, oh, there goes brother so-and-so. There goes sister so-and-so. Come on, Pastor. God says, you just don't know. You really don't know. It's time to make up our minds this morning. It is so good to have Shirley. Is that Gage? God is good all the time. All the time. Praise God. When you're down and it seems like you can't see bottom without looking up, God's still good. I heard that old song this week. Brother Spears sings it sometimes. The God on the mountain is God in the valley. I don't know. I just like that old song. It says life is easy. When you're up on the mountain, you've got to be east of mine. Like you've never known. But then things change. Oh, 
said, this is old time Pentecost. In our prayer meeting service last Sunday night, Sister Marie's aunt, Louise, sitting on the back pew right back there where she sat, praying through and receiving the Holy Ghost. Just been tearing. Yes. Yes. Last Sunday night, she didn't have to tear the wall. Yes. God filled the hole. Yes. I know it's hard to hurt her to get up here. But the ladies, I got this. I'm gonna give it to you right after church. That's all right. She's still inside. Greater all these 
anything do the Gentiles seek? For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Let that soak in a minute. He knows your needs. The heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. Everybody say things. The things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. We have got our priorities mixed up. We got it twisted. We have. We've got it all messed up, and the world calls us to have it messed up. Because the world pushes and promotes and advertises every day. Every day it is shown in our face, but he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's not enough to seek the kingdom of God if you don't live holy. You've got to go after his holiness and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's pray. Lord, we love you this morning. We're so thankful to be in the house of God. We you thank you, Lord, for all that you've already done. I thank you for the you in this house. Thank this Jesus choir, Jesus Lord, Lord, for yielding to your spirit and, God. and worshiping with praise. The angels with will praise. With praise. The with praise. The man of Galilee. Pray that the anointing of God will flow in this building. God, the conviction will walk Lord, through lives. Lord, and I ask you now to soften our hearts and open our minds, our very souls to what the Spirit is saying to the church. To the church. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody say amen. amen. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say the choice, the choice is, yours. is now yours. The choice is now yours. It's your call. The choice is yours. It's your call. You can laugh. You can talk. You can make fun. But at the end, the choice God's got the is for you. God said, I am not lost. You are not me. So you better open up your hearts this morning and open up your minds. I want to talk to you a little bit on that choice of yours. My God. My God. My I'm intrigued with different cultures. I'm intrigued with different ages. Yes. I can sit and listen to an elderly person talk all day. The knowledge so much to glean from them because they have a lifetime of experiences and things that they have learned. If I can learn something that will prevent me from doing it, I'm all ears. Teach me. Our world has a group of people called baby boomers. That's the 60s. That's anybody that was born between 1944. Basically, in 1964. You're a baby boomer. You are a baby boomer. <laughs> The breakdown by age looks like this. Baby boomers were born between 1944 and 1964. They're current between 55 and 75 years of age right now. Anybody fall in that group? How many baby boomers are here? In that category. All right. <laughs> Seventy-six million in the United States alone are baby boomers. Then there's Generation X. That's my generation. They was born between 1965 and 1979. That's my generation. They're between the ages of 50 and 40 and 54. There's 82 million people, Generation Xers, in the United States, according to the census, April 22nd, 2019. And here are some of the attitudes they share. See if you can relate this morning. Generation X. They feel betrayed by politics. They were betrayed. The 
the baby boomers and the Generation X. They're strong supporters of environmental causes. Yes, sir. Preach it, Pastor. They value happiness over financial reward. We ain't that the truth. Because they're working longer and harder to meet their basic financial needs. That's a fact. They are liberated thinkers. Yes, sir, they are. These two generations have become servants of the system. I want to explain that. Help us, oh God. Unfortunately, these two generations and the two following generations <laughs> lie, and the millennial generation, those 18 to 29, have all become servants of the system. The ideologies that are freely embraced in society are finding their way into the thinking of those that are in church. Come on now. The reality is that the American culture has shaped their lives more than God. Yeah. The American culture has shaped the baby boomers and the generation Xers and the generation Y and the millennial generation. They have been shaped more by the American culture yes, sir. than the Word of God. Look at the way they dress. Look at this generation. Look at what interests them. They're music. They're entertainment. Today's Christian influence Christians are influenced more by the world and the spirit of the world than he or she is influenced by God. That's a fact, Pastor. Steve Gallagher said in his book, Intoxicated with Babylon. Oh God. Life for the newly saved believer in the United States yes, sir. generally goes on much the same as it did prior to their conversion. That's no lie. The generation Y and the, genera the millennial generation feel like I can have God and still have my world and I'll make it and be okay with God. And I'll make it. Sadly, even after we are saved, we remain American first. American but you can be certain of this one thing. In 1 John 2 and 15, there is an all-out war right now for the heart and the mind you can believe it. of every single Christian. Reaching for two worlds and losing hope. 
and losing both is just not That's possible. In Matthew 6 and 21, Jesus said, For oh, where your treasure is, where it lies, there will your heart be also. Without exception, a person will be led throughout life by what he or she cherishes most. The most. Why people walk away from God because they fell in love with something that was anti God. They're like demons. But as they go quoted it this morning, the ways of man are right. Was right. In the Word of God, no. In his own eyes. In his own eyes. A person who's motivated by and controlled by a deeper affection Lord, for anything other than Jesus has become a servant of the system, a servant of the world. Oh God. You need to remember, you cannot serve too much. You'll never do it. Everyone must choose who's going to dominate their life. It's going to be either God or materialism. Now, it cannot be both it won't happen. or nothing. The choice is made. That's a true the consequences are predetermined pre 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 by our Creator. The choice is made. The choice is made. But the consequences or predetermined by our Creator. Yes, oh, God. My daddy used to tell me, if you can handle the consequences, just go ahead and do it. How about it, boy? I said, well, could you kindly of tell me what the consequences are? <laughs> you don't want to know. He raised up his deal, undid his belt, jerked it all, and he said, if you think you're man enough to do it and take the consequences, just get out. Bring it on. One time I got brave enough. Yeah. About 17 years old, and I, I kind of got brave enough. And I said, I'm kind of tired of these women. I'm going to try my oats a little bit. And Brother Zeno, I said, Dad, I just don't believe I'm ready to run with it. He said, Good. He threw the bell down and he hit me. Knocked me flat on my back. He said, Remember, it's always me. If you can take the consequences. He said, there's only room for one bull in this corral. He said, and guess who he is? I never, ever said that to my dad again. I didn't dare. He hit me so fast. I didn't see it coming. I was laying on the ground still trying to figure out what happened. I was cold. His theory was, put the fear of God in the boys and you'll be all right. And he put the fear. You better believe. The person whose Lord is Jesus has the rewards of an abundant life. God is there any bad They're indescribable. John 10 and 10, he said, in peace of heart, in spite of of tribulation. Yes, sir. According to John 14 and 27 says, but the person who God is mammon. Let's read John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. But the person who God is mammon whose God is money, whose God is materialism, the things and spirit of this world will live in constant anxiety. Yes, right. No peace. No, no one no can rest. serve to masters. Right. Hallelujah. No peace for the wicked. There cannot be two heads on one body. Right. That would be monstrosity. That would be a free. And we cannot divide our lives into spiritual and material. That's the truth. Come on. Soul, spirit, and body combined to make one person. Hear this preaching. Therefore, 
therefore we can have only one master. One Messiah. Our modern Christianity has elevated concern about the body and material things so high that spiritual concerns have become just secondary. I can't make it today because I'm working. I understand we all have to work. We got pressures. But if I'm working on the Lord's day because I chose to work instead of going to the house of the God, Sabbath, there's something wrong with my master. did not keep the Sabbath day. Amen. Instead of our focus being on if you'll give, God will bless you abundantly. Our focus should be seeking first the kingdom of God.
that you did it. There's that anyone who loves mother or mother, son or daughter more than him is not worthy of him. But in verse 2, he says, Thus our love for our relatives should not lessen. We get that cleared up. Our love for our relatives should not lessen. I tell people all the time, family is all we've got. Look at us. 
Parallel. There ain't but three people in here. <laughs> and we're looking at everybody. How are they looking at you? Yes. Anxiety. Uh, yes. Anxiety. Parallel. I quote Isaiah. I quote in Isaiah chapter nine. To her, and after I got through, I said, God wants to give you peace. Hear me, says. God wants to bring you relief from this. She said, I've been this way all my life. I said, so you just suffered for 27 years. You live 27 years. God wants to deliver you. Yeah. And I said, God will deliver you. So I don't know why I can't be in the sun. God 
is in control. Yes, he is. We must not neglect the body's needs. We can't. The phrase translated take no thought means do not continually be anxious. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. And God said, poor baby. Let me play the smallest violin in the world. If they would only trust me. If they would only trust me. There's an old song that they used to sing, and I don't really know who wrote it. It says, don't worry. Be what? Be happy. Don't worry. Matthew 6, 31 and 32, the Lord says that there will not be a single thing we shall be anxious about. There is not any particular instant, no sir, that should make us anxious. There was a song that became popular a number of years ago that, that carried a very simple message in the Don't worry, be happy. I don't know if it was Sonny Co or what it was. I hear them. Play that a whole lot still today. Freedom from anxiety presupposes God being our Father. I told my kids and my wife, I said, if I needed $10,000 and my daddy was still living, I could call him at 3 o'clock in the morning and he said, I'm on my way. Hang tight. Got a dead eye. He was hard as nails. You can believe that. He was a disciplinarian. <laughs> but if his kids were in trouble, look out. He had the tenacity of a bulldog. I choose to be like you, Lord. 